Hi folks, we're doing our series on the Word of God in your life, so let's come before the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you and thank you for all your goodness and love. And Father, we pray in his name that you bless us today. Father, I pray, anoint us with the Holy Spirit, and may each one of us meet with you right now. We ask this, Father, in your name and for your glory, Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're going to look at this part of uh, about studying the Word of God. Um, imagine you're in a desert and you've got no water. And you've been there for a few days and there's no water. And, and you're absolutely thirsty. You're under the palm trees, you're stuck there, you've got no water, it's really, really desperate. But then someone comes along, a camel comes along and there's a big, big bottle of water and you drink the water and it refreshes you and that's what the word of God is in this life we're in a desert of men's ideas but when the Bible comes it's like a bottle of water it will refresh you and renew you like no other book in the world President Reagan said within the covers of the Bible are the answers for all the problems men face it's so true folks I need to say something though, in these times, in these modern times, um, many people are just going to not accept the Bible. They're going to walk in deception. They're going to be deceived. Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 115. There's going to be a lot of deception, folks. You know, a lot of people are going to be running after the new atheism and whatever, and Islam on cults, Mormonism and Hinduism or whateverism, they're all going to be running away. There's not going to be a m many following the truth. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 15. So you've got to be ready. Chap uh, 2 Timothy, sorry. Chapter 3, 1 to 15. It says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. So there's going to be people even in the church who have actually turned away from the Bible because it says having a form of godliness but denying its power so there are going to be people in the church that seem to be Christian but they're denying the power of God in their life having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away for of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins led away by various lusts always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth there's going to be people even in the church who are more interested in sexual sin and you can see that today you can see even in the major denominations sexual sin is rife even amongst evangelicals sexual sin is rife but they will progress no further for their folly will be manifest to all as there also was but you have carefully followed my doctrine manner of life purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecution and affliction which happened to me at Antioch and at Iconium and Listeria what persecutions I endured out of them all the Lord deliver me yes and all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution here it is but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse deceiving and being deceived but you must continue in the things that you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus look folks there's going to be a great apostasy there's going to be people in the church who pastors and leaders who are immoral and ungodly you can see that today with the faith movement and all these faith preachers getting in all the money it's all give us your money and they've got jets and planes and fast cars and it's all apostasy there's nothing of God in that and there's going to be a an, an sexual sin and a lot of pastors and a lot of 
uh, people in churches are thinking they can sleep around now that they can do whatever they want sexually and, and they're turning away from the word of God many bishops are teaching things that the Bible doesn't teach saying that homosexuality is okay or it's okay to be a homosexual or gay and, and, and they're turning away from what the Bible teaches and so the church, a lot of the church is moving away into apostasy okay and you can look at that as a skeptic and say there's nothing in Christianity. Look at them Christians, they're just like the world. The, what, what's happened is they're not really following the Bible. They seem to be Christian on the outward, but actually, inwardly, they've turned away from the Word of God. And you as a Christian need to be encouraged. You, you see people falling away, you see pastors falling, you see people getting into immorality in the church and you get discouraged, you think, oh, that 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 elder seemed really noble person, but but the but actually they were they were having an affair, and I, I'm not going to church no more. That this Christianity is rubbish, because look at him, look at what he did. Well, the Bible tells you that that's going to happen. The Bible warns you, and folks, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse, and I I, I need to tell you something. I've, 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 dis I've discerned it, maybe you've discerned it as well. But I just discerned that there are Christian pastors and preachers out there who are, who are true servants of God. Okay? They are true servants of God. And you know something? I think they're feeling the heat of the battle. I think the tide is getting tough for them. Because of the people are apostatizing from the word of God. And you need to pray for those pastors. You need to pray for those Christian workers because they need you to help hold them in prayer. Because they're being squeezed by people in the church who have turned away from the Word of God. Who want man's standards, man's thinking in the church. And faithful pastors and faithful Christians are battling for their lives. And they need your prayers. Okay? So we must not get discouraged, folks. Don't get discouraged. Take your eyes off the, the apostate Christians, the apostate church. Turn your eyes away from it and turn your eyes upon Christ and turn your eyes upon the Word of God because this is going to get tough. But we can stand if we stand in the Bible. And Paul was telling Timothy, look, it's going to get worse, Timothy. But get into the Bible, get into the scriptures, and you're going to be strong. And that's why the people of God in the past, that's why Tyndale, that's why Luther and Calvin and, and Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones and Spurgeon and the, and the great missionaries such as Gladys Hayward and, and, and Helen Rosevear and, and all these great missionaries, they could stand because they were people of the book. They were immersed in the book. They were soaked in the book. They were alive in the book. They lived in the book. It, the Bible was everything. And if you have deep roots in the Bible, when the winds come, when the waves come, Jesus Christ promises you, when the test comes, you'll have deep roots and you'll be able to stand. But when the testing comes on the church, people are not going to be able to stand. Because they didn't have deep roots, deep foundations. And you young people in the church today, it's not apologetics that you need. I'm all for that. I'm all for teaching apologetics. I'm all for teaching people to be armed intellectually. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But that's not going to make you stand. What will make you stand in the day of testing is the Bible. And young people, you need to soak yourself in the Bible. Go on desiring God ministries and, and listen to John Piper's preaching week, 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 week and get soaked into the word of God get on to grace to you by John MacArthur and listen to his sermons and sermons and, and soak the word of God get on to Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones recording trust and listen to the old preacher there preach the word of God get on through the Bible by Dr. I think it's Werner Werner McGee or someone like that through the Bible or Sermon Index and there you will get taught the Word of God pure Word of God by godly men who will, who, will, who will build you up that's what you need as young people 
You need to get a, a, a hunger for the word as a young person. Please, as a young person in the church, I beg you, please, please, start getting a hunger for the word of God. Because you're not going to be around in a year's time. You're not going to be around in five years' time. You're going to be gone. You're going to be in the world, doing the world's things. As sure as night is day, that's where you're going as a young person. You say, well, I come from a Christian family. It doesn't matter if you come from a Christian family. You're going to be in the world. Because you didn't have strong foundations. So get strong foundations. And youth workers. Youth workers. What you're doing is youth workers in the church. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You, you're crazy. You said, Jay, I want to I want to play music and have some fun. Yeah, but why, as a youth worker, aren't you building your young people on the Word of God? What's wrong with you as a youth worker? Get out a Bible reading plan, get out a Bible study plan, and teach your young people the Word of God. Say, Jay, I want to I wanna get them to deal with the questions of the time. The Bible will deal with every question of the time. Get them into the Bible. Get them to understand the overall scope of the Bible. Get them to understand books of the Bible. Get your young people into the Bible, youth workers and pastors. Listen, pastors, some of you are absolutely deplorable. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace what you've been doing the last few years. Getting your sermons off the internet. Downloading a sermon outline and then putting a few illustrations. Oh, come on! You can't be serious! You can't be serious! Can you... It, it, can a pastor doing that? You must be been balmy. You can't be serious. You can't be a pastor when you're doing that. You've got to study the Bible as a pastor. You've got to get into it. Feed yourself on it. Study it daily. Get on your knees and study it. Study it. Study it. Get new manner, fresh manner from God. Get fresh manner from God. Say, so God, give me a message. And he'll give you a passage. And as a pastor, study it. And then pray over it. And then get in your pulpit and preach the message that God has given you. And damn those sermons you keep down, out, down, sermon outlines you keep downloading from your computer. Damn them to oblivion. Send them away. <laughs> For goodness sake, come on. And you've got the gifts. But you won't be in the ministry. God has called you as a pastor. I don't know why you did it. Maybe you got busy. Maybe... Maybe you've, you've got comfortable, you've relaxed in your manse and your, your salary and your wife and your kids and you've chilled out and it's been easier for you, but no way now. We're in a war, Pastor. We're in a mighty war. And you've been called in the front line of the battle. And the people of God need to hear a word from God. So you get into your study and say, God, please give me a message, I beg you. Show me your scripture. And I'll study it and I'll preach it. you got to do that, Pastor. you got to do it, okay? you got to do it. And I'll tell you what, when you start doing that, mighty things are going to happen. Oh, come on, Pastor. Come on. What were you called for? You weren't called for a nice middle-class lifestyle. You were called to wage war. So come on. Get into the Word. Get before God. You're going to be mighty for God. But you've got to start studying the Word of God as a pastor. Okay? Okay? And, and Christians, come on. Come on! Come on! These are days, desperate days. We've got to get into this now. Come on, let's get into it. Amen. We're going to continue to study uh, in the next section. Thank you. Take care.